Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And the news this weekend is that the Cabinet Office has ordered a leak inquiry into how the text messages which reveal that Boris Johnson corruptly fixed tax rules for billionaire Conservative supporter James Dyson found their way into the public domain. The focus of the inquiry seems to be that Dominic Cummings is the prime suspect for this due to bitterness of his failed power struggle last year. But is that really what's going on? But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, after batting away questions about why the Prime Minister fiddled tax rules for a wealthy Conservative supporter, for which there was not even any return for the British public, 10 Downing Street have now decided to focus in on the source of the leak. Part of me actually wonders why the bothering. I mean, damaging leaks like this could absolutely bring a government down and in the past quite possibly would have done. They'd have certainly ended the careers of the politicians most heavily implicated. But Boris Johnson just brazens it out and never seems to suffer any reputational damage. While too much of the general public believe that Johnson is delivering the best outcomes for them, and their country, they will seemingly let him get away with murder. This is a lesson in itself, by the way. Opponents of the Tories, of course, need to keep pointing out the staggering levels of corruption, but that's not going to bite. That's having no impact. What will really bite is highlighting just how much worse they are making people's lives. If you don't hammer that last part, the first part is completely toothless. Johnson's supporters know that he is a liar. Pointing it out, doesn't change their opinion of him. They know he's a liar. They know he's corrupt. They know he's lying in his pockets and those of his friends and associates. They know this and they accept it as some price which they don't even see as being the price they have to pay for whatever it is they think he's given them in return. But anyway, the leak inquiry, which is supposed to all ex also examine other leaks that have drawn attention to Johnson's uh, less than valiant behaviour in recent months, including his embezzlement of Conservative Party funds to deck out his flat. Dominic Cummings is being accused of the leaks. Now, the way things would appear to have gone so far for Cummings is that he started 2020 as Boris Johnson's closest confidant. So desperate was Johnson to retain Cummings as close personal services that he badly damaged the reputation of his government over the Barnard Castle affair and his own personal reputation within the Conservative Party. By the end of 2020, it seemed to be all over for Cummings as an apparent power struggle between himself and Johnson's latest fiancée, Carrie Simmons, resulted in Cummings exiting number 10. So the motivation is arguably there. Cummings is a deeply vain and arrogant man, and I'm sure he would relish the power of being able to cause so much damage to the government out of spite for his own perceived treatment. But here's the thing. Sure, he'd have the motivation, assuming events last year played out as they appeared to. He'd also have lots of evidence that could be leaked to the press as and when Cummings wanted to. Means, motive and opportunity, Cummings has them all. But what impact is this happening? Having, you know, at best, it means we have another example of Tory sleaze to pin on their charge sheet should the opposition manage to cut through this shield of invulnerability that Johnson seems to have. If they can just show that his government is not improving the lives of ordinary workers, then those ordinary workers will indeed be much less forgiving of corruption that is also knackering the public finances, which should be used on health and education. See, the problem is people at the moment think they're still getting the money for health and education and jobs and all the rest of it. So, you know, if they, Boris Johnson wants to feather his own nest, oh, it's a little bit extra, why not? But unless and until that cuts through, this is just another one chalked up to Tory corruption. It's having no short-term impact on the government. Actually, no short-term negative impact on the government. Because at worst, this is like every other scandal to break so far. A useful distraction from the Conservatives' lack of progress on any of their promises. The timing just seems very suspicious to me. If we assume that Cummings genuinely is annoyed at Johnson and wants some spiteful revenge, this was not the time to drop this particular bombshell. But the timing could be quite useful for the government. The media are now struggling to justify much more space on their front pages for royal gossip, so attention will inevitably turn to having a look at what's going on in the country. Well, the government can't have that, can they? I can almost imagine the meeting amongst Johnson's advisers. What we need is another dead cat. Old Dom was good at those. 
Then they all smirk as they realise he can do so again. Might they have leaked the text themselves, perhaps supposing that it had a high chance of coming out at some point in the future anyway? Just bring it out now at a time of their choosing when it can do some good, so that it will be old news when people might try and use it to do some harm against the government. And for good measure, blame Dominic Cummings for the leak, because I don't actually know that Cummings isn't still advising Johnson. Sure, he's no longer operating in the government web, he's no longer an unelected bureaucrat being paid for from the public purse, as far as I know, but that doesn't stop him being, say, a Conservative paid advisor for Boris Johnson on a private arrangement. And it doesn't even have to be on that arrangement, because the Conservative Party don't like Dominic Cummings either. It could be an unpaid role. All to the better, in fact. Of course, it wouldn't really be unpaid. Dominic Cummings would presumably be paid in corrupt government contracts of the kind he and his family were receiving last year. And I don't want to go running off with some mad conspiracy theory, but on the other hand, I mean, when there has been a leak of the Prime Minister's personal text messages, doesn't matter who it's involving, there has been, by definition, a conspiracy. Someone leaked this information, whether it was someone working for the government, wanting to distract from other news, or whether by someone trying to harm the government. But if it was someone trying to harm the government, I'm not really sure that they're all that in tune with the nature of British politics right now. Before this leak, we knew that Boris Johnson left his previous wife when he found out that she had cancer. We know that at the height of the first coronavirus wave, he took himself off to the country to sort out a divorce settlement. We know that he had an affair with someone and paid her public money when he was mayor of London. We know that he wasn't attending emergency response meetings for months last year. We know that he was corruptly funneling money to friends and donors, which resulted in huge shortages of PPE for the NHS and care homes, as well as failing to get a fit for test for, for purpose test and trace system. We know that the government are not applying any restrictions at our borders, and yet we keep importing new, more worrying variants of the coronavirus from overseas, as well as are making our own. The Indian variant is just the latest in a long line. We know that Boris Johnson screwed up our students last year and is doing so again this year. We know that he is giving nurses a real terms pay cut when he promised an above inflation pay rise. We know that he lied about the consequences of Brexit. We know that he's still accepting vast donations from Russian sources when a report has highlighted the extent to which Putin's government has infiltrated British politics. He has also done nothing to even begin implementing the recommendations in the Russia report that he tried to suppress. The word is banded about too much and I avoid using it, but Boris Johnson is a traitor to this country and its people by such a margin that it is impossible to be hesitant about using the term in this case. We know all of these things and yet his popularity is disturbingly high. With all that in mind, what sort of muppet would think that fiddling tax rules for one more billionaire would be damaging for Johnson right now. Who thought that that would be the thing that, the, the straw that breaks the camel's back, the thing that gets the public to go, oh no, that's too far. It is news that enrages right-minded people who are increasingly aghast at what is happening to our country and our society. That is it. Those of us who long ago were against Boris Johnson. Nobody's mind is going to be changed about Boris Johnson based on this thing. If Dominic Cummings leaked this because he wanted to damage the Prime Minister's reputation, he's even dafter than I gave him credit for. But I don't think he's that stupid. I think that if the thought ever occurred to him to collect useful information to use out of spite, you know, at some later date, he would have either had something much bigger than this, much more cutting than this, or his timing would have been much better. You know, if you have something that's going to damage Johnson's reputation, the best time to use it is when the party are wavering in their support for him. And then you can just use it to tip him over the edge. Not when he's secure. You might wait till autumn, perhaps, when the next big coronavirus surge is happening and Brexit is biting harder. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.